All right, boys and girls, welcome back to another Hytale overview. Today, we're going to be doing an overview over world generation. And as you can see, it was like 25 minutes ago when they posted this article. So uh, we're going to go over it real fast. So, um, and honestly, it was so funny because Noxie on Twitter was all about this. And he was like, he, he sent out a GIF and everything, you know, it blew up. So, 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 so. Let's get back over to the world gen. Okay, so I'm going to do a lot of read through and you guys can read with me. And then I'm going to make some commentary as usual. Okay, today we're going to provide a first look at Hytale's world generation system. The technology that underpins every area that you're going to explore as you progress through adventure mode. As you might expect, there's a lot to cover, so let's get to it. First, however, a quick note. In order to focus on world gen and avoid spoilers, We've disabled creatures and enemies in most of the screenshots below. Okay, that says a lot already. <laughs> so there's obviously a lot of creatures and a lot of things that have been disabled. <laughs> For them to even make this note, there's probably something big. Okay, so the first thing we're going to run into, the world of Orbis. Okay, um, and as we can see, I guess this is like the general world. But let's get into reading, and then I'll have my little commentary on here. This piece of concept art is one of the first we produced when development of Hytale began. It depicts four of the zones that make up the planet of Orbis, which is where the bulk of Hytale's storyline takes place. So, apparently Hytale is going to be a story-based game in adventure mode. Which, I think we all assume that already, knowing that there's going to be quests and other things in this game. But I'm kind of excited, because there's a lot that we get to see from this. Now, one of the craziest things that we're going to be able to check out once the game is released is just how in-depth the storyline's going to be. So, as uh, if you guys actually went through the concept art that I was talking about earlier, um, it was the last video that I posted, we were already talking about biomes. Now, this is important. In this concept art right here, I wonder if I can click on it real fast. Aha! Magic. So, uh, we have the standard where the Quebecs, we know that the Quebecs are here, which is the Emerald Grove. So the Emerald Grove is one of the areas that, you know, that that's like the go-to, that's kind of like the thing, you know. We, we already know a little bit about Emerald Grove. And primarily, it comes down to the type of creatures that we'll see. We'll see bunny rabbits, we'll see dogs, we'll see... Um, just basic wildlife. Also, um, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but that looks very, very similar to the dungeon with the goblins in it that we were able to see during the trailer. I don't know if you guys remember that, but but that is uh, very similar. And then we have the Howling Sands with the ferns. The ferns are the floppy deer, you know, desert-dwelling animals. But they're also creatures similar to the Quebecs. Now, we know a little bit about the Devastated Lands, which has the uh, the lava creatures and stuff like that. But I don't know personally too much about any side creatures that could be there. But just uh, make that note that there are going to be creatures we already know about in most of these areas. And we've already seen them in the trailer and so on. So... Hopefully we already have a basic understanding of where some of these creatures are going to be. And I'm definitely going to have to do like a rehash on what the Emerald Grove, Howling Sands, the Borea, and Devastated Lands has. Because well, I know most of the NPCs that are going to be in those locations. And I feel like it's going to be important. So let's just take note of this for now. Generating a zone. Here's an example of a zone-based world generation in action. You're looking at a top-down view of zone 1 comprising of several different biomes, forests, lakes, hills, ravines, and more. So just because of that one section, so they're divided into zones versus what we thought about them being biomes. So each one is its own zone. So zone one, which is the Emerald Grove. So we have the Emerald Grove. Um, and let, let me go ahead and read the rest of this. Our world gen system ties these together seamlessly along the topographical features like ponds and rocky outcrops, which you can also see a handful of generated points of interest, which is 
awesome. So if we actually think about Minecraft's generation, which is kind of different, and I think you guys can kind of see that it makes more sense in Hytale's generation. Um, just because of the amount of detail that's been put into it. And you can tell that most of these structures are, you know, natural. More natural than Minecraft would. And I say this with all love in my heart, Minecraft. There's a few things that uh, we probably needed worked on. But um, it's really awesome that we're even able to see some of the details in this. And just how awesome this is. How well developed. Each zone has its own set of blocks and distinct content, including furniture sets, NPC races, creatures and critters, plant life, weather, and geology. Exploring a, a cave in Borea will be very different from exploring a cave in the Emerald Grove, which I think we all assume this, but um, I think they were trying to make it very clear that everything's going to change and there's going to be a little bit of a transition. And just from this concept art, or not necessarily concept art, but this screenshot, I do want you guys to take note of this. There isn't much of a transition from, you know, this side to this side. However, the tree types are very similar. And I'm pretty sure this is Borea. I'm not sure if the whole thing is Borea, but if anything, this would be um, Borea or Zone 3 then this would be Emerald Grove Zone 1. So just keep that in mind, and we'll have to take a look at this in the future. Okay, so then they kind of just threw this over here just to show kind of how the furniture trend is supposed to go. So I'm guessing this would be, um, that this could be from Borea, and this would be Emerald Grove. So they're trying to keep that comparison. And they're not telling us a whole lot about the other ones, which I'm kind of surprised about. Coastal areas in the deep ocean. Zones have different coastal features too, including specific biomes for the shoreline. Above you could see a coastal mountainous or <laughs> above you could see a mountainous coast in zone three, whereas below you can see the sands of zone two. So I think that's pretty cool that there is a transition. They try to make that distinct and just like I said before, you know, they're they're still there's somewhat of a transition. So that's really good that they're making that transition with the zone 2 and 3. And it makes things very, very easy on us. And again, they have another concept art of how you can see the transition of zones and how everything is very distinct. I really can't wait for the rest of the generation. And I know there's probably going to be some edits on the generation as well because as we can see, it's not necessarily perfect because of the grounds just kind of bleh. But... I have a feeling that they're going to add a lot in the future. And they keep on teasing us with a lot of these structures, so I can't wait to see those in the game too. These unique world gen elements continue underwater, which with secrets to find if you're brave enough to venture beneath the waves. And they've already talked about scuba diving gear, and we already have that in the trailer when it was referenced. And we have our puffer fish. Oh, the dear puffer fish. But um, we do have a lot of things that we get to check out, and we're already getting teased with structures. Again, <laughs> I really want to see the structures, Hytale. <laughs> That's not all, however. Venture far enough from land, and you'll encounter the ocean shelf, a sudden drop-off at the edge of each zone that leads to the deep ocean. The deep ocean is, effectively, a zone all by itself. It holds many dangers and rewards for intrepid explorers to discover you'll have to prepare carefully in order to survive in the depths so this is probably going to be a late game thing but i'm guessing there's going to be a lot of not necessarily boss battles although the kraken has already been eh, semi-confirmed because they speak so much on the oceans and it has a concept art all to itself um, so I'm guessing the oceans are going to be very, very good for loot. So be prepared for that. Beyond the oceans lie the infinite lands. Hightail's high tail storyline won't take you out that far, but our world gen tech will ensure that there's always something for you to find beyond the edges of the world. Generated Caves and Dungeons World generation applies to the underground areas too, including caves and dungeons. While these will play differently in each zone, there are a few universal principles that govern each. 
So I'm guessing there is a, mm, I guess there's a portion that you can kind of tell from this concept to this concept is that there's going to be levels. So there's going to be different sections to every single dungeon. And it, that's kind of one of the basic principles that they're talking about. And as you guys remember from the concept art video, we actually went over some of the crates and things like that. And as we could see, there is a lot of loot up here. A lot of potential loot. Well, hi, this is Pierce from the future. Um, clearly I didn't know what I was talking about when I was talking about a second skeleton, because if you look close enough, it's actually just a bunch of bones that are piled next to all the crates. So, uh, just ignore my little spill about a skeleton for the next- Then we're also getting teased with the snail right here, and I'm assuming that's gold, and a few other things, which, but I'm really excited to see the rest of the generation. Caves are full of secrets and creatures to encounter and will be an important source of resources. They are entirely they are entirely procedurally generated based off of rules that differ from zone to zone. Dungeons are a little different. They compromise multiple chambers and encounters joined by connecting passageways, often accumulating in a final room, providing challenges and special rewards tailored by our world team. And that is exciting. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier when we have different sections to the dungeons and how we need to go over, you, you know, you got to go through level one and two and three and four and five. And then you kind of loot everything you can and then you get to the final boss and then you just kind of go from there. And that's also hinted in the trailer when you have to go against that giant skeleton boss looking guy. They also gave us a little bit of a sneak peek. So as you can see, like that would be the entrance in, right? And then you just kind of travel right down and then there's many rooms that we can check out inside of these dungeons which i think this is actually a really good addition to hightail just the fact that if you ever get bored you have dungeons and other things to explore prefabs dungeons are just one example of how prefabrication content is incorporated into hightail's world generation we've created thousands of prefabs 3785 so far they've run the range from environmental features like trees and rocks and rock faces, all the way up to the ruins, buildings, and special encounters. These are distributed throughout the world at random and sometimes appear only once, but may feature hand-designed challenges, objectives, and rewards. Oh, this says a whole lot about Hytale. And look at all those trees. They're all pre-built and they're looking spot on. Portal dungeons. So this also was mentioned but there wasn't like a whole bunch mentioned about it um i know that in one of the concept arts they were talking about the portal design and how lanterns indicate completion but this is one thing that we do need to take a look at because it's always going to start with some sort of prefab then it leads down to the actual dungeon which i wonder how this is going to all work out. I'm really, really curious. Above you, you can see a concept art for a specific kind of prefab, the entrance to a portal dungeon. When you meet the criteria necessary to unlock one, you'll enter a hand-designed encounter with its own rules and terrain. You'll be limited in what blocks you can break within these portal dungeons, challenging you to overcome obstacles using your other skills. I hope there's no parkour. Depending on where you find them, portal entrances can take several different forms. So I guess they were going to give us a little bit of a tease on the entrances, and here they are. There's not a whole lot of detail on what they look like, but you can kind of tell that they're all very, very different. And you can kind of tell which zones they came from, like this would be zone 4, uh, this is zone 1, this is zone 1, this is... I'm guessing zone 4 again, uh, but it, that's about it. What you find on the other side will be will vary, vary massively. There's a glimpse of an early portal dungeon, the Temple of Gaia, along with one of its component parts, the Garden of Elements. So that's kind of what they were, you know, teasing us with this right here. So let's go over here and check this out. Um... Oh, oh, so this is when you enter into the portal. Oh, wow. 
that looks beautiful. So I'm guessing this is actually a pretty big dungeon, seeing as they're using runes. And if you guys remember some of the runes and stuff like that. And again, here's the Garden of Elements and our very, very best friend, the Corrupted Golem, which I think you guys have seen him in uh, a lot of the teased videos happy little acts you've got to got a sense of the broad principles that govern world generation in hightail from unique zones to hand designed dungeons all of this is governed by a set of rules and some of our favorite environmental features come about when two contrasting sets of rules collide we call these happy little accidents moments when the principles we've laid out for a given zone combine in surprising ways so that's kind of like what they're talking about right there which is a happy little accident but it looks very very smooth unlike minecraft's world generation sorry i'm hating on you minecraft but look at that generation that's that's just beautiful we've discovered rivers that carve their way through mountains and dungeons that have been split in half by a ravine swampy terrain might creep halfway up a mountain or you might be exploring a cave only to discover a lost mine deep within these small touches help ensure that every world and the adventures you have there truly feel different. So there's kind of like one of those splits that he was talking about, which is pretty cool. There's a lot to this, and I'm really excited that we're going to have little happy little accidents like this. Similar to how Minecraft's generation was, and I think it will bring us back home. What's more, all the world generation systems we've created will... It will be fully customizable by content creators. You can tweak world generation rules or write your own through configuration files. You can also build and share your own prefabs and dungeons, including instantane portal dungeons. You can create and configure your own blocks, environments, and even NPCs. Combining all these options together gives content creators the power to craft biomes, zones, and ultimately worlds of their own. Thank you, Hi Pixel and High Tail, for all this amazing work that you guys put into this. I know you guys have been working on this all day, and honestly, I'm really excited to see the rest of this world generation. Well, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and hopefully we'll be able to go over some more on world generation, because I think this is only the beginning of world generation. So, see you guys later.